going to be on the floor. Every last one of us. My God. Bless God again for evangelist Carla Lynn. Glory be to God. Hallelujah for tapping in to the kingdom. I have in, uh, been introduced to them for the first time in my life. And my life has changed already outside of Chanel because I've met you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is awesome. I'm being blessed on today. We've got another dynamic woman of God in our midst. She is an evangelist. She's an author. And she's a teacher. Received a certificate in Christian teaching. And thereafter spent the next 20 plus years studying a combination of theology, Christian education, culture and apologetics through various universities including Oxford University in Oxford, England. She is the founder of WATN Radio, the absolute truth Christian talk radio. And, it, and, and this radio station provides 24-hour Christian programming. Somebody ought to put their hands together for that. Her home church is Saved Souls Ministry in New Jersey, where she is the director and serves of, of the director of education, it is. She is the founder of Logos Institute of Ministry and Biblical Studies, where gifted leaders are prepared for work of the ministry. She has authored several books, including memoirs, memoirs of a woman scorn. Mm. Saved but bound. And what happens after you believe? Somebody say, hmm. Anybody want to get the book already? I know I do. Come on and put your hands together for co-pastor Juanita Price. God bless you, woman of God. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome again. I'm glad I put my makeup on. These women are gorgeous. Oh, my goodness gracious. I can hear the men saying, I need to come to church. Amen. <laughs> I need to come to church. Pastor Juanita, it is an honor to have you here. Thank you. Very much. You've heard these dynamic women. I have. My Praise goodness, God. they left a little something for you. Just a little bit. A little something. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I read it, but tell us something about yourself. What's not in the bio? What's not in the bio? Is that, um, is that I just love the people of God. Amen. And the people that don't know the Lord. That is really sums Amen. up everything that I do. That is my pearl of great price. And that is serving the people of God, God's children. Amen. And so that's what's probably not in the bio, but indirectly it is in the bio, that I love you all. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here to serve. Amen. 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 Your bio declares a lot of information, so I'll ask what I ask the ladies. Sure. Where do you sleep and when do you sleep? Well, no I sales, sleep. You travel, my goodness. I, I, I sleep when I pass out, just about. <laughs> but I, I just recently um, left um, court we, almost a year ago um, because I, I realized that the demands of ministry uh, were growing. Um, I also know when I need a break, which is something women do not do, is wow. that we don't listen to the signs that you need time for rest, okay. you need time for meditation, you need time for evaluation. And so during that year, or during this almost year, that's what the Lord kind of took me through, that path of just just realizing some things, looking within, um, looking at the things that were uh, measurable and the things that were not measurable in ministry, which kind of casts us on a sort of uh, sense of wandering. You need to be able to measure what you're doing to see that it is effective. And there's some things that we do that are just in the way. And if we don't stop you know, to evaluate, you know what I mean? We'll still just be running and running and piling and that kind of thing, and that will wear you out. And so that's what this year has done for me. Amen. Amen. I like the vacation and evaluate. Yes. That's important. Just don't go away. Evaluate. Evaluate. Sure. Where you've come from, where you are, and Absolutely. where we're going. Yeah, it's important. We've got some questions sure. for you, Pastor Juanita. We want to dive into them. Some of them are heavy. Yeah. They're heavy. I'm glad it's you and not me. Ah! 
<laughs> I struggle with loneliness and God has not sent me a mate. What should I do? Amen. That question to me was born out of those that feel that they have to do something in a sense um, with respect to having that person to supplement their life um, to uh, heal that sense of loneliness. And what we have to do first is we have to explore the loneliness. And the fact remains is that if you are praying and you believe that is the thing, the thing that's going to remedy that loneliness, you're probably wrong during that time because one of the things that scripture cautions us to do is to seek to be content to explore contentment and if God has not given you that so-called desire of your heart it's just simply not time point blank it's not time he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek them he is one who gives us the desires of our heart and generally if you are still waiting and a thing has not been fulfilled it may not be for you or it may not simply be time and the point of waiting for something when it is not time is God is cleansing you during that period he's prepping you I think that we alluded to that earlier on that for example with dating you know someone alluded to the fact that some people should not be if they're our insecurity issues and and when we do things ourselves we really mess up and so we want to be careful during those periods that we are also cognizant that God is up to something he's doing something and what I need in this moment that I haven't gotten what I want is to be content and loneliness causes people if you allow that that I'm going to call that emotion to preside it causes people to make uh, decisions that are often something that is devastating, that is damaging. Um, we begin to leap before we, are, we, we look, so to speak. And what ends up happening is that we make decisions in order to appease that and comfort that loneliness that will take us, many of us, years, decades for some of us to actually get uh, delivered from and healed from. And now what have we done? We've started off a life where we have to spend the next 10, 20 years trying to recover from that one choice when all we need oh to goodness. do is put loneliness in check. Wow. Period. Wow. Period. Amen. Period. It's not time. It's, it's not, not time. time. It's not time. That's a good. My mother passed away, Bo. Mm -hmm. Passed away Juanita, uh, in April of this year. Mm -hmm. So the wound is still fresh. Yes. But when I uh, read the question, I thought about my mother uh, when young people would come to her and say, uh, Mother Key, I just want to be married. And my mother would say, go in the Bible and look how many times they say bound. Every time they talk about marriage, say bound. Now you want to be bound? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I said, Mother, that's not good advice. Amen. <laughs> she said, read it for yourself. Every time you talk about a wife and a husband, say bound. Yeah. You're bound to your wife. You're bound to your husband. You're bound. You really want to be bound? Yes, amen. And, and you know what's interesting is that a lot of the reasons we come up with, listen to her, many of the reasons that we come up with to satisfy our loneliness, we're thinking that that mate will maybe help us financially, that mate will help us sexually, that mate will help us, um, they will be that companion I can talk to, and a host of a whole list. And then we get married prematurely and we find out none of those things are there. And you're yet still lonely with that body laying in the bed with you. And we ain't going to talk about sex. Now don't even talk about it. Don't even talk about it. you got to be at least present for that. You know, so um, let's get that in check. Let's get that in check. And I'm speaking as a married woman. Let's get that in check. Get it in check. All right. Mm -hmm. My flesh is on fire. That girl is on fire. <laughs> and the Bible says, Ooh, just do like the this thing about Alicia Keys. Not a thing. All right, well, I'll be holy today. Amen. <laughs> My flesh is on fire. And the Bible says it's better to make than to burn. You just said this, but we'll ask it because someone took the time to ask it. Is that reason enough to get married? And all the married women in the house said together, no. Let's go Thank to question you. three. Amen. 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 Y'all need to put your hands together for that one.
Now, the key to that is the word better. Do we want better or do we want the best? Ooh. Really, think about it. We're talking value here. Would you rather that which is better or would you rather that which is best? And to me, sane and responsible people want what, what that which is best for you. And you don't want to make any decisions based on your flesh and what goes on there. Once it takes the lead, it it, it starts that first ingredient to the recipe for disaster. Disaster. I counsel women all the time who made that decision based on your flesh intimidating you, bullying you. We can't get it under subjection into obedience, which is a scripture as well. And they are the ones that are in my office because they realize that one, you can't really compensate for a lust spirit and flesh that wow. is out of control. Wow. You just can't wow. feed it. And the thing about having a lust spirit, you you don't know which direction it's going to take you right, in. Right. No one, nothing in the natural can satisfy that. And your flesh should never be the reason we make life decisions. It is reckless. It is irresponsible. Yeah. It's irresp and that's usually not the time. And we love those permissible scriptures. We love those things that are permissible. We love that. Yes. But that not which is, is expedient. We kind of skip over that. You know, and so we got to become disciplined and allow the fruit of self-control to begin to flourish and emerge in our lives. That's good, Pastor Juanita. Is flirting okay as a Christian woman? Uh, now, it says in here, married or single. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why a married woman would be flirting. Mm -hmm. But then again, that's because she decided to get mad for better so she wouldn't burn. And now she's flirting because she realized better wasn't best. Do we have to shout? <laughs> you want to finish this? <laughs> Married women flirting. All right. That's a new one. Ah, glory to God. Go glory to God. And yes, I had to make that clear and I had to make that distinction because I have seen married women flirting just as much as I've seen singles flirting. And with the married women, I've heard them uh, punctuate their flirtations with, I'm married, but, you know, that's a problem. And what we be concerned about and careful about with flirting is, you know, the very nature of flirting is to send a message that you pretty much may not be serious about to take something to such the degree to such an extent you know that it, or you at least think that there is a limit in your mind but you have to remember there are two people involved and you have no control over that message that you're sending how that message is going to be delivered to that individual and and flirtation usually many times is of a sexual nature whether we want to admit that or not because we're using certain things about our countenance our bodies our whatever to actually do that and you have to be careful we have to be careful ladies when fl in flirtation that that we come as close as we can in behavior to the message that we really mean to send so we have to first evaluate the message what message am I trying to send okay and then let us say you think that your message or that you just want to show a young man that you're just interested in him well does your behavior actually send that message you don't know because you don't know what that person is receiving by what you're doing it let's do it the bible way and let's be responsible in that area let's be mature and maturity says that i have observed someone that there might be a possibility that i'm interested in and you do that through communication and yes ladies you you are more attractive i think to 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 a man um when you inwardly know that you're beautiful and when you're inwardly and you know that you're beautiful you do things to the outside that kind of complements that but the outside Side should not send a greater message than what's going on on the inside that should not be our focus it is part of it but if you you know you don't want to be Gucci but hoochie on the inside you, you see what I'm saying you see I mean to put it you know you know give, add a little slang to that and figurative uh, speech to that but CERN is what's going on on the inside and there are things that we don't have to do we don't send messages someone alluded to the fact that he will find you and he will and if you're allowing God to lead you and most of which um, God leads us through our ministries through our purposes through our callings and that positions let's read the story of Ruth and Naomi that positions you for whatever you need on the path including a husband amen 
So let's get our hands out of the, the equation and let God, the author of marriage, do the writing of your stories. We've dealt with this topic from the beginning, from the first speaker to now. It says, I struggle privately with depression and even want to die sometimes. How can I be free? Wow. I actually wrote a book called, um, wait, I forgot the name of my own book. Lord have mercy. <laughs> but, it, oh, How to Conquer Depression Spiritually. It's been so long, many years, and I need to bring that and dust wow. that off. And the one thing about depression that we have to explore is, number one, is it really chemical? You know, is it a clinical situation? Because depression can be a, a medical condition, but depression can also be a spirit. And so obviously anything medical, you want to con you want to seek medical attention. And of course, you want to pray about who to go to and so forth. And remember, God works through our natural healers, too. We think the gift of healing is, you know, all the goosebumps and things like that. But they are, they are people that God has led into the medical field uh, and, and they have studied their craft. There are people in here, you know, that confuse the uh, natural work with fear of spiritual work and we think that they have to be or they are at odds with one another and not so. And so there are times when you must go to the doctor. But when depression is a spiritual issue, you know, you have to turn to the word of God. You have to pray. Someone mentioned that as we were coming up, there are things that are happened that we suppress as we have learned that a good woman is somebody who can take it on the chin and keep moving, which, by the way, is why people keep slugging us, because we, we, we equate strength to being able to take a punch, and we've got to cut that out. People need to know, no, you hurt me. You, you hurt me. You, you, you know, you've devastated me. That's not, that's not a proof of strength. It's not proof of strength at all. And so the Bible speaks of the garment of praise, putting on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Some of us have to change what we watch. We have to change how we think, because some of us will work ourselves into depression and anxiety by allow, allowing certain thoughts to go or roving around in your mind. True, but so we true. have to begin to attack those thoughts with the word of God. Your very scripture talks about casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That's another kind of warfare of the yeah. mind that we have to employ to defeat depression. So thoughts, the word of God, that's warfare, prayer, meditation. Some of us have to learn how to discipline those thoughts and to bring them unto the obedience of Christ Jesus. You do that through meditation on the scriptures, Amen. flooding your conscience, Amen. conquering your conscience through the word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our time is flying. I want to dive into this question as quick as I can. I want to be a submissive wife, but the very thought of it turns my stomach. Glory to God. How can I obey God from the heart when I resent even the thought of it? Usually the very, that very dialogue coming from a person suggests that there is, um, might have been abuse, whether that abuse was experienced um, directly or indirectly through having maybe witness such a thing. And when I mean abuse, I don't just mean verbally speaking, but it could be emotionally speaking. It could be witnessing some unfairness going on coming up, something you personally experienced or witnessed. And so you're, you're the very thought of that, I just turn your stomach. And why many women hate that term submissive is because of usually an, an ignorance of what it means. And then those who abuse submission, it is many times because of an ignorance of what it means, followed by some arrogance, some, some you know, some egotism thinking and so forth and so on. some some people are trying to validate themselves by putting you down and beating you up and exerting you know their uh, their 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 highness so to speak their loftiness over you but it's a misunderstanding and submission is a volitional thing it is willful God doesn't make you submit as a woman you 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 willingly place yourself in a sense in position underneath or excuse me under the leadership of your husband which is the head it is volitional it is not something you sh you should be made to do nor should you feel that you are being made to do it that's not submission that is lordship when lords their position over you that's a lie from the pit of hell so keep in mind submission is volitional it is willful and that's why it's important to know who you are connecting with because if you both have a healthy um, notion healthy ideas about submission you come together and you discuss the order of the household and I'm not talking about head tail and all that but how you want your household to go the, the vision for your marriage the vision for your ministry these things you do the Bible speaks of 
of in that passage, I believe it's Ephesians, he talks about, he first says, submit one ye to another. And then he goes into wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. And then he goes into how the husband should react and how he should love his wife as Christ loved the church. Then he goes into this whole dissertation on what Christ did for the church. Because So when you really look at it, in the purest sense, the husband is doing more submitting than the wife. Amen. And we've got we've there. got one minute. Gosh, I, I did my best to get to this question. Let me rush through it. I do not like men. I have thoughts, feelings, and dreams about being in a lesbian relationship. Does that mean I am a lesbian? Can I act on my homosexual impulses? That's the question that came Someone up earlier. Someone touched on sister. that earlier, right. Right. which is awesome. No, it does not mean you're a lesbian. First of all, I feel like killing my husband. Can I act on it? <laughs> Can I? You cannot. We should and never should be governed by thoughts and feelings. We are governed by the word of God. Second Timothy 3 and 16 tells us what the word of God is there for. It is there for our instruction in righteousness. It is there for our correction. It is there for repute. Proof is for rebuke. We take our cues from the word of God. We cannot go by what we feel. Our feelings are fleshly and we should not be governed by the flesh. Whenever someone begins any sentence where I feel and I think, that's a red flag flag for me. You have to submit to the word of God, which is there for our best interest and there so that we can live the highest, the most valuable, the most beneficial, the most healthy life that we can. So no, you're not a lesbian because you feel like it and you hate men. If you get up under under the word of God, God will begin to replace those desires with the desires that should be there. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Man, you almost hate to rush these powerful women of God. Pastor Juanita, I'm going to get to you. We've got 30 seconds left. Do what you need to do. Speak to these women and let's have prayer for them. Amen. Amen. Last but not least, the, the thing that I've heard echoing all throughout all the speakers is simply this, is that we have, become, have to become better stewards over this life that we've been given. One of the reasons why that we um, are in the kind of pain and torment and bondages that we're in is because we haven't been good stewards. It doesn't matter what you've been through, what has suffered, you've been raped, you've been this, you've been that. It doesn't matter. What matters is how you deal with the past. And we must deal with the present in a healthy way. And that is taking responsibility for your lives right now. And obviously we may not know how to do that. That's what the word of God is for. That is get on your face. My knees are black. Why? Because my ministry is probably 10% theology, but it's 90% ne neology. And neology is effective. It is effective. And so with that, I'm going to wrap up. Just be responsible with the life you've given and stop making excuses. Don't matter what happened in the past. You're here. Here is what's important. Father, we thank you right now. And I praise you for all of these women, God. Those that might have just carried this thing as if it was a cloak, a hat, all the stuff that has happened to me. These things have robbed us of value. These things, oh God, has robbed many of us of meaning and purpose, God. We've sat there busying ourselves, oh God, with what has happened in my life, how this has made me less than. But God, we thank you that your word is truth. It doesn't matter how I was born. It doesn't matter what happened, oh God, as a result. The Bible says you must be born again so those things are irrelevant anyhow so father I pray that you would heal every vessel in this place you would loose us from the shackles of stubbornness loose us from the shackleness of ignorance loose oh God us from the shackles oh God of self pity father and I pray that the champion of God will rise up within every woman in here in the name of Jesus for those of us who lack power baptize us oh God with the Holy Ghost and that with power God for when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, yes. you shall receive power in the name of Jesus, oh God. Move in this place, God. Change lives, oh God. You are the answer, and let us never lose sight of that, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 God. God. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. My, 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 my. And we've been blessed this morning. Put your hands together for Pat.